we'll come back and uh, yeah, please continue. Okay, hi everybody. I'm trying to, to draw for you an example of insertion. So I'll, I'll, I'm almost done. Uh, so if so it's just to show you an example, if you were inserting this by word from the right, right? So if you're using right insertion, first we would insert one, one, and it would bring us from here to here. And you can see what happens. We kind of find correct position and droop it. And then we kind of glue them there and now we have this guy, right? So, and all other steps are similar. And if sometimes it takes more than one drooping, there are certain rules, but at the end we get this, this insertion and this is the final bumpless pipe dream, right? So this is our P over here. And the, the chain, the recording chain in this case is something like this. So this is one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> one. It just records which permutation each of those is. So two, one, three, four, five. Two, one, four, three, five. Two, three, one, four, two, five. And then the last one, I can now do it here. Four, three, one, five, two, four. So you can check that this is permutation three, one, five, two, four. And the indices, the decorations, they're just the decorations we had on our letters, right? One, three, two. But the insertion process depends on those decorations, right? So depending on what this number is, the insertion will go differently. Okay, so now let's just try to do the same thing which worked for us in the Grassmannian case. Um, Let us define for specific decorated chain T, let us define T sum sum over all bywords W, whose recording chain is this particular T. And we just if, if we sum the weight of such bywords Ws, which is still the, the same, I mean the usual weight you would assume it is. Then the serum by you know the serum serum is that by dot GME yeah. oh. it is, is that you still get the Schubert polynomials T still equal sigma of W as long as this chain ends you know the top element is W. Mm -hmm. Schubert polynomial. So that's okay. So so we so it in fact this kind of suggests that we should treat the collection of such bug words as some kind of complete flag variety and analog of crystal. Again, we don't know how to define it locally so that you know you just define local moves and all together the the the, the connected component will be will give you you know Schubert polynomial. But Globally, you can just describe all correct rights. You can cut out the set by just saying that the recording tableau should be this particular decorated chain, and this cuts out. And in fact, we have some you know work in progress on on what happens if you try to build crystal operators on on, on such a set. So I can say something about it if we have time. So your notation seems to be suggesting that those. Uh... Uh, chains, decorated chains is the right anal analogy for Tableau, maybe? Yeah, so those decorated chains, they are exactly right analogy for Tableau. In fact, let's do an example. Let's try to multiply two Schubert polynomials the, the same way as we did before. So let's take two decorated chains, just like, you know, in the beginning I showed you, I took two standard Young Tableaus, one and two, one and one, two, right? So now let me pick two decorated chains. And I'll again pick simple ones. So one, two, three, four, then two, 
one, three, four, two, uh, so two, one, four, two, three, right? So one is for permutation one, four, two, three, and the other one, three, four, one, two, four, three, two, one, four, three. Okay, now I will try to create a table similar to the one I had at the beginning, or maybe I don't know if I have enough space here. Oh, well, I'll try. So, okay. Okay, can you see this grid? Okay, so here are three words by words which apparently is a complete collection of by words which have this first chain two 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 one two 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 and one two one two and the second one is three three one one two three one one and one three one one so maybe you could move the screen a little bit back because the bottom row is missing. No, this, this is the bottom row. I didn't. Yeah, we can't see it. Can you see this thing? No. Oh, I can see it on my screen. Oh, really? Oh, oh. Um, do you have some kind of thing at the I bottom? Just need to do for, okay, okay. Maybe other if other people can view it, that's fine. Yeah, I can tilt it a little bit here. Okay. Yeah. Better? Okay. Now no, I can see it also, yeah. Okay, and what Thank we do, just like before, we are trying to multiply them by simple concatenation. So, so here I would write, you know, three, three, one, one, two, 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 et cetera. But instead I will do something more informative. Like once we get such a byword, we write in the cell, we can insert it, right? We can, and I will just tell you permutation, which, which this byword gives once you insert it, right? And those permutations look like this, two, four, three, one, three, two, four, one, four, one, three, two, four, one, three, two, two, five, one, three, four, two, five, one, three, four, uh, three, four, one, two, four, two, one, three, Five one two three four. Right, so everybody understands what I did here. For example, how do they get two four three one? I I take three three one one, two 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 two. This word of length four, I insert it, and then I forget you know the actual bumpless pipe dream or chain. I just remember permutation, and I I'm telling you this permutation. So. And this turns out to be, it's pretty close to how product of those two Schubert's, you know, sigma 1423 times sigma 2143 should decompose into Schubert's. So, but there are some mistakes sort of. There, so this table is not perfect. So this should have been two monomials in the Schubert of 2431, but this one is wrong. This one is actually correct. Those two together give us two monomials in, in, in Schubert of 4132. This one is correct. It should be in this product. This one is correct. It should be in this product. And this one, again, it should have been three things with permutation two, five, one, three, four, but this one is wrong. So somehow there are two places in this table where we didn't get what we should have. If, if we got the correct permutation in those two, then you know the trick would have worked, but, but it doesn't. Okay, so does it make sense what, what I'm saying? So like, for example, Schubert of 4132 has two monomials. One of them is X1 cubed X3, and the other one is X1 cubed X2. And this, this Schubert does occur in product of those two Schuberts. So, this chunk is correct, it's perfect. It tells you what it should be there and it's there. So almost everything is correct, except there are two mistakes. This and you know, you, you could stop there and you could just say, well, this doesn't work, game over. But- 
So I'm going to tell you that in some cases it works. Okay, yeah, question. You, you, you're saying that your product has um, five super polynomials. That's uh, right. This product, one. That's right. This, this product will have five Schubert polynomials with coefficient one. You can see which ones here. They should be 2431, 25134, 3412, 4132, and 51234. And some of them we get perfectly, and some of them, you know, we get almost all monomials perfectly, except for one. Okay, so now let me try to convince you that there is a reason why this didn't work in general. And I want to say that the reason is, is as follows. Unlike what, so what's, what's different between this world and the world of the usual plactic, uh, you know, plactic monoid, whatever, crystals, Grassmannian case, right? So what's different? And I claim that the difference is that bywords in general are not associative. So can we get the camera a little bit up now? Yes. Great, right. thanks. Okay. Yeah. Yes, perfect. Okay, so I want to say the following, that bywords are not associative. And here's what I mean by that. If we have some kind of, let, let's think about Grassmannian world, world first, right? So we have some kind of word or permutation or I, I don't know, something like this. We can just insert it, right? We can use right insertion to insert it into something. Or we could have done left insertion and just read it from this direction and inserted it. Or we could do something even, even more sort of complicated. We could just say, I will start here. I will first have empty, you know, and then maybe I will assert this three from the right, and then I will assert this three from the left, and then I will assert this one from the left, and then I will insert this four from the right. You know, in each time, you know, once I insert this three, I will have three, then I insert this three, I will have another three, I will insert this one, it will bump something out, you know, you know et cetera. I, I, see, I think that's the right way to, like this, this was column insertion. So, and then I insert this four. So I, I don't know. So a property of the usual RSK insertion, in fact, property of two RSK insertions, the right one and the left one, is that doesn't matter what choices I make. I, I can decide to insert towards any, you know, goal, like I can insert, put my goal over here, you know, my empty and just insert everything from the right, or I can put it here, or I can put it in the middle and choose arbitrary uh, order in which I, you know, alternate left and right insertion. The resulting tableau will still be the same. It turns out that this is not true for bywords. So if we pick this, for example, this byword we got here by concatenation C3, Oh, one, 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 two, two, two. Yeah, I guess this guy where it didn't work. You know, one way to think about the order in which we do insertion is to draw something like a binary tree. So if I was to draw a tree like this, it would mean that I, you know, I start with this guy, insert him first, then I insert this guy into him, then I insert this guy into him, then I insert this guy into him. Or I could, uh, you know, I, I could uh, start on the other end. I could uh, right insert, right? So this tree would give us the insertion of all the word in, uh, from the left. So I guess it would be left insertion. I would first insert this guy, then I would insert this guy in the result, et cetera. Or I could pick something which is sort of in the middle. Oh. So something in the middle would look something like, I don't know. Right, so I would first insert this guy, then this guy into him, then this guy into the result, and then this guy from the right into the result. Something like that. So there are all those choices you can make on how you insert things. And it turns out that in general, they, they are different. Meaning that is that if you take this monoid of things which insert into a particular bumpless pipe dream, it's not an associative monoid. It matters in which order you, 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 you do those operations. So, however, there is one case, there is one case, or rather one kind of 
I don't know how to say, subset of cases where this monoid is associative. So here's a serum, again, by the OG and me, serum on, on. If indices of your word, right? Those numbers, three, one, two, two. If those numbers are weakly decreasing, in other words, if A1 uh, is greater or equal, sorry, I1 greater or equal than I2, greater or equal than, et cetera, greater or equal than IN, then this word A1, I1, et cetera, to AN, IN is associative in the sense that it doesn't matter in what order we do those insertions, we, we will always get the same result. Okay. So, and this suggests that we can multiply Schubert polynomials using this technique, as long as we can find the decorated chains, which you can just concatenate without breaking this condition, the weakly decreasing of indices. <laughs> right, so if you want to compute sigma w times sigma pi, two Schubert polynomials, the question for us is, can we find a decorated chain for w and decorated chain for pi such that, you know, this decorated chain has indices i1 uh, through in, and this chain has indices j1 through so J, JM, and they together they just form a single non decreasing sequence once you concatenate them. Because if this is true, then we have no problem. And, and then in this case, we can in fact prove that this kind of table drawing and then whatever actually does give you the combinatorial rule for structure constants of Schubert polynomials. So, and the question is when does this happen? When, you, when can you find? A decorated chain for W and decorated chain for pi such that the smallest thing in decorated chain for W is bigger than or equal than the largest thing in decorated chain for pi. And this is so the so called de separated descent case. Separated descent case. Oh. So, which, which was originally due to Knudsen and Zin Justin. Oh, this definition, but it's it's in some sense it generalizes the Grassmannian case. It also generalizes a case Lenard considered, which is so. Okay, so what's the definition? The definition is that all descents in W are bigger than some or equals than some K, and all descents in uh, in whatever pi are smaller than or equals than k, right? So if all descents on W are just one descent, which is at position k, and all descents in pi are also just one descent at position k, then that's just a Grassmannian case, right? That's a case of uh, Grassmannian. So when each of them is a Grassmannian permutation with the same k. But here we allow a lot more. We allow W to have more descents. They just have to be to the right of k. and we allow pi to have more descents that just have to be to the left of k. So, and in this case, you can just find two chains for w and pi such that they, if you concatenate them, you don't, you don't violate this non-decreasing condition. And from this, you somehow can prove that this gives you little resource in the room. So everything works out just fine because this monoid in this case is associative because it's actually well-defined thing to write a byword without specifying in what order you insert into it. Okay, th this is like pretty much all I wanted. So the, the little Richardson rule would look would sound like this. Again, just like at the very beginning for Grassmannian case, we would say, let us count the number of pairs of bywords such that the first byword has this first chosen recording chain and the second byword has this chosen recording chain. And once you concatenate them and insert it, you will get this chosen uh, bumpless pipe GM for for you know for the 
you know, the Schubert you want to co compute coefficient of. And if you count the number of such pairs, you, this is a structure constant. Okay, th this is the end of my talk. I, I will stop. Thanks very much. Uh, let's thank uh, Pasha for a very nice talk. Yeah.